Joining us just before his talk on INSEAD's Asia campus is Don Tapscott, INSEAD adjunct professor of technology and operations management. He's the author of 16 books, including the bestsellers Wikinomics and most recently Blockchain Revolution. Thank you for joining us. Great to be here. The talk you're about to give is entitled The State of the Blockchain Revolution. Can you tell us the state of the blockchain revolution in broad strokes? Uh, the, the state of the blockchain revolution is good. Uh, many people think that this technology is not really being deployed in an operational way, that there are just experiments and pilots, but that's not true. Um, there are hundreds of examples of production systems that are now having a big impact on, on a dozen different industries. Blockchain and Bitcoin are often used interchangeably. What's the difference and why does that difference matter? Well, blockchain is the second era of the internet. For 40 years, we've had an internet of information. Now we're getting an internet of value or anything of value from money, securities, uh, intellectual property, the data in our identities, art, music, ultimately votes, can be managed, stored, transacted peer to peer. And Bitcoin was just the first app of blockchain, the underlying technology that makes all this work. Kind of like email was the first app for the Internet of Information. Can you walk me through a couple of industries that are either in the process of being impacted by blockchain or on the cusp of being impacted by blockchain, and what will that impact look like? Well, at the Blockchain Research Institute, we're studying over a dozen industries, and all of them have major things happening. Normally, people think about the financial services industry, and that's where much of this started. But take something like trade finance, where you have people doing business internationally, and the trains and boats and planes and trucks and escrow agents and transfer agents and borders and customs and tax authorities and sh shipping agents and so on. Moving emails, faxes, paper, uh, uh, computer bills and so on, bills of lading. Imagine if all of that were a shared network state where you could see real time everything that's happening and where there was a single version of the truth. So trade finance is moving uh, to blockchain in the financial industry. Another area in that industry is venture capital. Um, this industry is being disrupted because of crowdfunding on a blockchain where you sell a token and the token represents something. It could represent a security or a share in a company or it could represent something else. But these token offerings are now uh, raising um, last year well over $10 billion per year. So that industry alone is starting to see big disruptions. When people talk about disruption, their concerns automatically gravitate toward the job market. Uh, what do you think blockchain's ultimate impact on the job market will be? Well, short term, any country that creates a, a rich ecosystem for the second era of the internet will generate all kinds of jobs and economic development. And in many industries, um, blockchain creates many job creation opportunities. Long term, the combination of blockchain and AI will be very disruptive for labor markets. In 48 of 50 states in the United States, the number one job type is truck driver. Well, that'll be eliminated by autonomous vehicles, not in a century, but in a decade. The number one job type for women is cashier. So I think ultimately we're going to need a new social contract. The economy is growing, but jobs are stagnant or declining. We have to find a way that people can have a living and be productive. Is there a role for blockchain to play in creating that new social contract? I think so, in the sense that blockchain is a trusted platform whereby people can uh, trust each other to do business and to create value, including public value, in all kinds of new ways. So people can cooperate together, for example, to tokenize a carbon credit and create economic incentives for billions of people to behave in a more green way. It's a company called CarbonX.ca that's doing this. I'm in, involved in that company. So there are big, big opportunities to use the technology to solve some of the most intractable problems that we have. What do you think the social and environmental impact of blockchain will be? Can it be a force for good? 
Well, humans create good in the world. Humans solve problems, not technology. But once again, the technology genie has escaped from the bottle. And with blockchain, it was summoned by this anonymous person at an uncertain time in human history. And it's not going to solve our problems, but it gives us another kick at the can to rewrite the economic power grid and the old order of things. Blockchain can be used to almost instantly bring a billion people into the global economy delivering financial services. It could solve the problem whereby 70% of the people in the developing world don't have valid titles to their land. It could do things like ensure that the creators of value, musicians, artists, scientists, journalists, who are not fairly compensated, receive compensation uh, for that value. If we do it right, it could create a new halcyon age of entrepreneurship because little companies can have the capabilities of big companies without all the liabilities uh, like bureaucracy and legacy culture. So virtually any area of uh, social or human concern, there are big opportunities. You are taking an active role in shaping the future of blockchain uh, by becoming involved with startups in this space. Uh, do you have any advice for would-be entrepreneurs in blockchain? Um, it's the same kind of advice you'd give to any entrepreneur. You know, 99% is showing up. Uh, you just got to work hard. You can't ever give up. Sure, you have to have a big vision, but you have to build the talent and the team to, to, uh, to execute. But it's a very exciting time because you have access to resources, like, say, money, that you didn't before. Before, you had to develop a very sophisticated um, business operation, almost. And then you'd go to a venture capital company, and they'd say, sure, we'll give you a million dollars for 51% of your company. Now you can conduct a ICO, initial coin offering, although I don't like that term because what's being offered is typically not a coin, a currency. Um, you can sell an interest in your company, like a security, or you can uh, offer the opportunity for people to buy tokens that represent something else having to do with your company, a future state, some utility in the company, and so on. And if, you have, if you've got a good business plan, a credible uh, management uh, team, and you show a lot of determination, then you can raise some funds and keep control over your company. So this is a really exciting opportunity. Don Tapscott, thank you for joining us. My pleasure.